It's time now for a look at the latest in local news. In the news, Wayne County Schools back in session today. The school sent out a notice reminding all parents and students that all Wayne County Schools are open and resume normal schedules as of today. They go on to say that they're thankful our community was spared the brunt of the storm damage and they're excited to see students back at school today. Appling County not as fortunate as the board office and school in Appling County. A lot of roads were damaged due to the storm. The board office and the school both suffered water damage. Appling's Board of Education has called off Friday night's border war game between Wayne County and, and Appling County. Both teams are open next Friday, but due to lack of officials, it appears that's not a viable option. So far, no agreement when the game will be played has been reached between the two schools. Hopefully, we'll get an update on local sports. As soon as we get an update, we'll pass it along on our Facebook page. But again, no game tonight, no game Saturday. Hopefully, a game time next week. What day is the big question mark at the moment? The first Georgia death linked to Hurricane Idalia has been reported in Valdosta, Georgia, as a man died from a falling tree while trying to cut up and clear another tree on his property. On Thursday, Governor Kemp called the impact scene in Ben Hill, Clinch, and Marion counties devastating. Georgia Power says they're still restoring power. On Wednesday evening, about 225,000 customers were without power. Again, Georgia Power says they continue to assess the damage in affected communities. It's working to restore power to customers in need. No hurricane deaths have been linked to the hurricane in the state of Florida. We'll be back with more news after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. In other news, the Wayne County Commissioners are set to meet Monday, September 4th at 6 p.m. at the County Commissioners Meeting Room. The agenda is out. On the agenda under presentations and announcements, Derek Duncan will give the annual forestry report. Under Citizens Concerns, Betty Benner to talk about Okefenokee Swamp and Steve McGregor to talk about naming a soccer complex. Under New Business, consider approved maps for several parcels of land. The big item is the pr- approval of the 2024 budget. Consider to approve the tenant millage rate. Also, consider and approve Georgia Department of Corrections Work Detail Agreement. Consider and approve Georgia Indigent Defense Services Agreement. Consider and approve resolution amending the 2023 budget. Consider and approve paper ballots for elections. Also on the agenda, items with the county administrator, items with the county clerk, items with the commissioners, executive session to discuss personnel. Again, all that's set for Monday at 6 p.m. at the county commissioner's meeting room. City of Jessup has four contested races in November as the mayor's position and three council seats are up for election. All races in Jessup are contested after qualifying ended. The mayor's race the same as it was last time. Incumbent Mayor Ralph Hickox and Tyrone Johnson, the two names on the ballot. In District 1, the two candidates are former Jessup Police Chief Perry Morgan and former City Council Member Ricky Reddish. Incumbent Shirley Armstrong did not qualify for re-election. In District 4, the two newcomers to politics, Jonathan McCullough and Margaret Rawls, the two names on the ballot. Incumbent Stanley Todd did not qualify for re-election. In District 5, Joe Roddy, appointed by Governor Brian Kemp to serve out the remainder of Ray House's term, did not qualify for re-election. The two candidates are former City Manager of Jessup Mike Deal and his opponent Katrina Dumas. WIFOFM will continue to interview the candidates up to Election Day, follow the contested races closely. Once again, Election Day is Tuesday, November the 7th. We'll be back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. The county and cities of Jessup, Odom, and Scriven will meet Wednesday morning at 8.30 a.m. at the William Azorn Airport. That's Wednesday, September 6th, as they're set to discuss distribution of funds and what percentage when it comes to the next loss will take place for the county and the cities of Jessup, Odom, and Scriven. The next loss vote is set for March of 2024, but the referendum has to be sent to Atlanta about three months prior in order to be on the voting ballot in which it will state the purpose of this BLOSS and what projects BLOSS funds will be used for. The county has already laid out their three projects, a community center, an equestrian center, and more security at the Wayne County Courthouses. Cities of Jessup, Odom, and Scriven all have their wish list, but the first hurdle is deciding the percentage of funding for each government agency. City Commissioner Tim Cockfield and Scriven Mayor Jason Weaver on record saying it should simply break down according to population. I'll agree that the percentage breakdown is the first item of discussion, hopefully in agreement. The meeting, once again, Wednesday, September 6th at 8.30 a.m. at the William Azorn Airport. WIFOFM will be on hand have a full report on Thursday's newscast. This is Labor Day weekend, and Georgia State Patrol and local law enforcement state, they'll be out in full force cracking down on drunk drivers. They'll ask that if you're traveling to buckle up, slow down, and do not drink and drive. Georgia DOT has suspended all lane closures in order to help travelers this Labor Day weekend, beginning today at 12 noon up until 5 a.m. on Tuesday. Georgia DOT says the heaviest traffic will be today, September 
September 1st. Motorists they stay can expect to add 30 to 45 minutes to their travel times. Light to normal traffic is expected on both Saturday, September 3rd and Monday, September 4th. Forecasts are based on historical traffic volumes on similar dates around the Labor Day weekend. We here at WIFOFM wish everyone in our listening audience a safe and happy Labor Day weekend. That's going to do it for the latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan, same a great day.